I'm currently getting myself psyched up to go outside to build a fire to cook with, but it's minus 20. I'll have a coffee first. Okay, let's, uh, let's go outside. Oh, it's really cold. Welcome to Stem Kitchen. Thank you for being here. It's very cold. It's minus 20 billion. The lights are frosty. They might break if I touch them, so I'm not gonna touch them too much. Anyway, I'm gonna make a fire and cook some things because like, what's better in the holiday season when it's cold than making a fire and cooking on it and eating the things? This is also the final video in my little, you know, collaboration with the Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative. And so I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do fire outdoors safely and responsibly. Not any of the things that I'm doing right here, but I'll tell you how to do them. Well, I'll try to show. I guess we'll see. So number one, get mitts on. I have a stump mitt, yay. And, and I have an ax, an ax. Wear like better shoes than this. Don't wear slippers, wear like hard toed shoes so you don't cut off your feet. <laughs> and then we get some wood. Oh, I think you're supposed to cut it on a stump. I see a stump. Oh, that's really heavy. This is my stump block where I'm gonna chop on. It's covered in ice! Shit. Okay, yeah. Oh, I got ice down my booty. So, first tip is, you know, just be safe. <laughs> but also, if you're outdoors, the best place to have a fire is in an already built fire pit rather than just going off into the bush. It's just a lot safer and better for the environment. If you can't do that, you can bring your own fire pit. You can't see the fire pit, not in frame, but we have a fire pit that you can like bring so you don't scorch the earth. Also, if you need to, you can like build up a mound of disturbed soil so you don't scorch the grass and stuff underneath. There's like great tips online. I'll leave you a little link about like safe fire tips, etc. What else? Oh yeah, like, Try to bring your own firewood or like don't cut down new trees. Like just like get some driftwood from beside a lake or some already downed branches and just like do sparse pickups all around the area so you're not taking a whole bunch and try to make it look like you haven't even been there. And like don't burn food and garbage because that's bad for the environment. It leaves traces of smells for the animals and just like you know, pick up all your garbage and ashes and like take it back with you. It's just really, really kind to do. I might have more tips that I've forgotten, but I'm too cold to think. So I'll put them down in the description below. Let's get chopping and we'll make something over the fire. If I can even get it started. Okay. Oh my, it's slippery out here. Feet apart. Ax in the stump crook and head. Ready? Oh. <laughs> Oh no. Again, this is so dangerous. Ugh. Okay, let's try a different one. No, come back. It's also good to do this with a friend who can help you if you're struggling like this. But I don't have one today. I don't have any friends here today. It's just me. But you know what? I'll tell you where you can find friends really awesome people working and volunteering and all this stuff for the Y2Y initiative. You can sign up for their newsletter in the link below in my video and just get more info about what they're doing for conservation in the beautiful Y2Y region, the Yellowstone to Yukon region. It's gorgeous and I don't know, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something good in a time where there's a lot of poopy stuff happening you know, in the world and uh, just being able to partner with them just makes me feel like I can do a tiny thing for the world that is just a little better for your heart. So sign up for the newsletter, get more info, find some friends if you don't have any friends today, like me. I'm gonna do one more and if this doesn't work, we're gonna go to a plan B here. Well, that was great. Thank you for coming to my fire workshop where we didn't make anything. That's fine though. Let's put this away so we're safe. I thought it would be better than this. I don't know what I was thinking, but. <sighs> okay, remember you have to like pretend like you weren't in the area. So I'm gonna pack out everything. I'm gonna put this back and make it look like I wasn't even here. <sighs> Let's go inside. Oh, okay. 
good. There's one thing I've learned in my life and doing STEM Kitchen is that sometimes things don't work out the way that you want them to and that sucks but it's also okay because you'll get through them. We'll get through them together. And the fire didn't work but you know there's always a plan B. And in this case we're gonna do a homemade fire with some vegan marshmallows. Let's see how this does. Oh my gosh, marshmallows are so good. Comment down below and tell me if you've ever done this before. <laughs> oh yeah, that's gonna be good. See, there's always a plan B. There's always a different way. And I think that's like, it's a neat way to think about how humans and animals move through the world. If we face barriers or if stuff comes up against us and we're just like, what's happening? We're pretty adaptable and we find ways to survive and move and adapt. And that I think, I don't know, Something I've had to do my entire life is somebody with one hand, somebody with a disability, and you know, experiencing lots of different changes in my life and stuff, and animals too, and wildlife because of our interventions in the world. So that's something I really love about my stump kitchen work and like celebrating the different ways that we move through the world and you know, how people adapt and change and do things in their own unique way. And it's neat how there's a lot of parallels with the Yellowstone to Yukon conservation initiative and how they work to support conservation initiatives and support nature and animals to live their best lives, to flourish. So yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to Wide why for having me as a partner for these last few months it's been really really cool maybe we can do it again sometime and I hope everybody watching has the best holiday season whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or not any holiday at all just eat a lot of marshmallows on a stick <laughs> and spoil yourself rest if you can this is take this it it's working, it's taking a long time, but I'm okay, because I have the time, because I, I scheduled time to make a fire, and I didn't, it didn't work, so I have time. Oh, it's really, oh, it's really working now, oh. <laughs> That's gonna be really good. I mean, it's kind of melted in the middle. Thank you so much for being here, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Huge shout out to my incredible patrons for supporting my work. That's unbelievable. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you subscribe to me on YouTube. You can also support me on Patreon if you want to. Have the happiest of holidays, and uh, we'll see you next time on Stump Kitchen. Cheers. Oh, Oof. Sugar. Sugar likes to burn. Magic. Stump Kitchen, Stump Kitchen, gluten-free vegan eats, stumptastic treats.